Aside from a solid kick drum and just a bit of drum breaks to make the beat interesting, what does a modern hard techno beat need is a rhythmic percussion pattern. In the third part of this tutorial series we will learn what kind of hi-hat samples we should use, how to create a groovy pattern with them and how to make them sound rich and full with both glue compressor and reverb. If you are interested in more sounds for modern hard techno, that is euphoric leads and screeches or hoovers, you can check out my both sample packs on my website. Now let's get to work inside of Ableton. Fortunately for us, for this style of techno, processing the hi-hats won't be that complex as in my previous tutorial where I showed you how to create hi-hats for industrial techno. This means that both sample selection and layering will be more important than ever. The right sounds sequenced into a nice rhythm is nearly 80% of our percussion work here. Let's start with something obvious that is an open hi-hat that always plays in between the kick drums. I can use a typical 909 open hi-hat or something slightly more sophisticated. I create a MIDI clip and sequence this sound to make it play along with the kick we created in the first tutorial of the series. Another obvious sound we need in the percussion is a long ride sample. Simple samples like these ones are fine too, but for a lighter percussion sound a ride sample will be more suitable. This ride sample is typically synchronized with the kick drum. Notice that I purposefully make the right sample much louder than the open hi-hat sound to make the whole percussion drive in. You want this right sample to be hearable well. The fundamental sounds are placed in the right places, so all that's left is to create more rhythm and fill the beat with closed hi-hats. An easy way to start that is to take one closed hi-hat sound and place it in between the right and open hi-hat sounds. The percussion sounds decent, but we know we won't be playing it with both right and open hi-hat sounds all the time. If we turn them off, the percussion needs filling again. What to fill the space with? We can either use more shaker samples or add more closed hi-hats. I will add these to the MIDI clip too. I can sequence these two samples in place of open hi-hat and right sounds I have temporarily muted. Honestly speaking, we have already done lots of work regarding our percussion, so now let me introduce myself quickly and just say that if you wish to have other sound design or music production subjects explained in such an easy and practical way, consider going onto my website and learning more about my private music production lessons. Free consultations are available as well. The next step towards our percussion sound is making it fuller by using layering. Its purpose is to stack on top more than a single sample to make the resulting sound richer. In this video I will use this technique only once. Let's listen to the right sample and solo. And now with remaining percussion sounds. I think the right itself should sound richer. Increasing the volume of the sample won't help much. Because the problem doesn't lie in the volume of the sound, but in the lack of some frequencies. I think that this right sample should be brighter. Typically I could try to use an equalizer now to fix that, but what is going to work better is finding an appropriate right sample that will complement the first one. That's because an equalizer, unlike the layering, can't add or create more frequency content out of thin air. So I'm looking for a bright right sample and I play it alongside the first right sound. Typically, the longer the layered sounds, the better results layering brings, so it's best to use that technique on the right simple or open hi-hat sounds. Before we start adding the effects to process the whole group of hi-hat sounds, let's work a bit more with the samples and rhythm. Improving the rhythm can be done with adjusting the velocity of each note in the MIDI clip. By default, every note here is played with its defined volume, that is because the velocity value of each note is equal to 100. But if that velocity was higher than 100, then the sound triggered by that note could be even louder. If the velocity was lower than 100, then the sample would be played with a lower volume. 
We can use this feature to make the same hi-hat sound be played with different volume over time, which can increase the rhythm of the whole percussion channel. What notes should have higher or lower velocity is something you set up to your taste. I prepared here a MIDI clip where I have exaggerated the amount of velocity modulation to show you better a difference in the percussion rhythm with and without that technique. This large velocity modulation probably sounds unnatural, so here is another MIDI clip with more fine adjustments. Improving the samples can be done in the simpler itself. The most basic adjustment, that is the volume adjustment, was already done a while ago. As a result, we have placed the right samples to the front and the open hi-hat a bit behind to make the closed hi-hats the quietest. Another important thing to do would be to shorten some of the samples in the simpler. This will be most useful for longer samples, so again, for the open hi-hats and right sounds. The benefit of that can be a cleaner percussion sound. Let's compare the sound coming from two percussion channels. In the first one, the samples are played as they were now. In the second one, every sample, besides the first right sample, was made shorter. What else can we do? We can add a fade-in to some of the samples to make them softer. Let's see how it works on some of the closed hi-hat sounds. I don't recommend doing that on all of the samples though, because the transients, that is the beginning parts of the samples, are what give the percussion rhythm and groove. I also wouldn't recommend using too much of pitch change through the transpose knob to avoid making the percussion sound unnatural. I used this knob only once, and only on a single closed hi-hat sound. All the samples are ready now for group processing. If we listen to the hi-hats channel with the kick drum, we can notice the hi-hats could fill the mid-frequencies area more. We can't just use more layering, because it would mean we have to add a few more samples, which sounds tiresome. Pitching down the samples won't work, because we will end up with an unnatural sound. Let's try adding subtly a lo-fi effect to fill the hi-hats with lower frequencies. The effect that is perfect for such a purpose is for example the redux. Let's add that pit crusher after the whole drum rack and use both rate and bits knobs to degrade the sound. One of most important effects in today's tutorial is the glue compressor that I will use now to make the whole hi-hats channel sound more coherent. Even though it's called a glue compressor, its most basic controls as the threshold, ratio, attack, release and output slash makeup gain work in the same way as in every other compressor effect. If you don't understand the purpose of them or you want to recap how does a compressor work, please watch my previous Modern Heart Techno Fundamentals video where I explained the basic compressor operation while working on trumpet breaks. In this video, we will delve into the compression immediately, focusing more on the practical use of it than on the theoretical description of each control. At first, what I will do is I will apply a quite large amount of compression to the hi-hats by just lowering the threshold and turning up the makeup to compensate the difference in volume. I will aim for 10 decibels of gain reduction.
When I just compared the hi-hats with and without compression, we could already hear some gluing added, which we will now refine. At first, I will tweak the attack knob. In practice, it's going to tell how much transients our hi-hats will have after compression. Long attack time will make the hi-hats more clicky and the short one will make them seem flatter. Changing both attack and release parameters indirectly influences the amount of compression applied, so to accurately show the difference in between short and long attack value, I prepared two glue compressors that had to have a different makeup gain value. With these, the hi-hats will be equally loud after compression. I will stay with the attack of 10 milliseconds and now in the exact same way we will adjust the release time. And again, I have prepared two different compression examples that we will compare right now. Similarly, as with the attack knob, when we set the release to short, we can expect the compression to make the sound a bit flatter. Let's stay with the release of 0.2 seconds and set, this time directly, the amount of compression through both ratio and threshold. Since the ratio knob has only three different values, we will set up this knob first and later I will fine tune the amount of compression with the threshold. Here with these two examples we will see how large influence the ratio has over our sound. When the ratio is set, in the end I set it to fall to 1, I fine tune the amount of compression through the threshold. These are the final settings of my compressor. Typically, after compression, I equalize the whole group of hi-hats. Equalizing them at this moment will have the biggest influence over the whole sound. We start out with a high-pass filter, just to make sure we don't have any low-end in the hi-hats channel that could mix with the low-end coming from the kick drum. It's really just a formality. It won't matter much whether the cutoff is set to 175Hz or 100Hz. I also use a low-shelf filter to make the hi-hats just a bit lighter, but the difference is going to be very small. What matters is the group of filters I use to shape the high end. Let's play the beat and see what each of these filters do. To both create space for the kick drum to cut through the mix and to enhance the rhythm, hi-hats can be sidechained too. Instead of using a sidechain compression though, I am using a Tal Filter 2 plugin, which is going to rhythmically automate the volume of the hi-hats. I set the correct modulation rate to synchronize it with the kick drum and pick the modulation target, that is the volume. At first, I will exaggerate the amount of sidechain added to show you better the difference in sound.
And now I will show you the difference in sound after fine tuning the volume automation. There is one more thing we can do to smooth out the sound of hi-hats and to make them richer. The last step is to add the reverb. For that again I will use the audio effect track and parallel processing so I can process the reverb independently. On the reverb processing chain I'm going to use a hybrid reverb from Ableton but this time I won't use the convolution part of it. Because I want a smoother sound out of the reverb now I will set the route into algorithmical. This means that we will start our adjustments by picking the right reverb type from from the algorithm list and work our way through the rest of controls we can adjust. Knowing what our reverb sounds like, I can now adjust its volume level. In the end, I equalized the reverb in a similar way I equalized the dry hi-hats. Does something happen in the dry chain? The only thing I add here is a utility to control the stereo widths of the dry hi-hats. And at last, I'd like to mention that in the same way as we equalize the hi-hats channel and the group processing and the reverb itself, I can also equalize individual hi-hats samples. Here in this project I equalized both open hi-hat and the first right sample.